you're in the last stage of the project, you're going to design either your 3D or 2D model using the When I talk about the kids learning area and perimeter, that's part of what the state standards say that fourth graders should learn. So everything, every lesson plan that we do is based on the standards that the kids must learn, the state's curriculum. They had to also say, what's the perimeter of each room? What's the area in each room? And then what's the perimeter and the area of the total uh, drawing that they've designed? We looked at the Habitat for Humanity website and saw different designs of houses. And we, of course, looked at examples of blueprints. Uh, I've had an architect talk okay, about remember, what uh, it means to design a house. Guys, remember what Mr. Segura taught us about your design methods. And I think, what kind of method are we all using on our houses? It was just a matter of providing that scaffolding for them, that support to give them the background knowledge they needed to move yeah. forward. Take a look back at your PBL, look at the entry document, and it says three bedroom, two bath. The website that we used uh, in completing the project and in using uh, the 3D shapes was one that's um, dedicated to Frank Lloyd Wright, and its whole premise is letting students design uh, houses in 3D form and where they go through all of the steps of having a client. That when you pick your client, then they're describing to you what they want in the house. So and and picking out their, where they're going to build the house, what style of house they're going to have, uh, what's the height of the house, what's the roof going to look like, where am I going to put my bedrooms, where am I going to put my bathrooms. And so uh, the kids use the technology, I think, quite capably. Oftentimes, at the end of our projects, when students put together their end product, it's usually presented to an external panel, not to the teacher and not to the class. We'll have parents come sit on panel. We'll have experts, whatever that project's on, to come in and sit on the panel. And then the students are presenting to experts, not to the class. And what you find is that it takes on a whole different meaning. Students don't want to look bad in front of experts. They want, to, they want to know their content and what the project's on. I think for the kids, it just validated what they were doing. You know, it wasn't like, oh, there's going to be an architect here. How do we handle this? It just validated to them that what we've done is so important that an architect is going to come and listen to us present it. I was kind of proud because she was hearing me and I didn't thought an architect could be hearing at me, and yeah, I felt proud of myself. It felt a little bit nervous because it was kind of our first time, but we also practiced a lot and we got through it together as a team. For me, it was nervous because we needed a clue, like with professional clothing, and I needed to wear a tie, so I was nervous because I thought like people would make fun of me, but. Did then, that happen? Did anybody make fun of you? No. What did they think? when they saw you with a tie on at school. What did, what did people say to you? I had a lot of compliments. I yeah. looked elegant.